want to uh, thank everybody for being here. Um, again, my name is Lori Cumbo. I'm the founder and the executive director of the museum. And I just want to thank all of you for coming out today. It's really been an exciting um, adventure and ride in terms of the whole exhibition. And I definitely thank Ralph for all of your hard work and for promoting the exhibition. And really, we just wanted to celebrate 30 years of Ralph McDaniels and Video Music Box. And the type of programming that we're doing today gives us greater insight to Video Music Box and the contributions that people have made um, with him or after him. So um, we encourage you to have a great dialogue and conversation. Um, and there's so many other programs that are coming up that we hope that you'll continue to support them as well. Uh, I just also want to note that we have um, two guests representing our elected officials. We have Gigi Elliott, who is representing Councilwoman Letitia James. And we also have Lisa Lashley, who is representing State Senator John Sampson. Panel on ladies and politics as well. So we, we have a lot of great things going on here at the museum. I thank you all for coming out. Please ask lots of questions during the Q and A session, and come back to the museum again and again. And I thank all of you ladies for being here and sharing with us your talent, your time, and your contribution to hip hop and to American culture in general. So thank you very much for being here. And as uh, Dexter noted earlier, I'm Nicole Moore. I'm the editor of a blog called thehotness.com, and I'm also the social media manager for the Museum of African Art. So let's jump right into it. Women in hip hop, females in hip hop, women that rap. <laughs> um, historically, and even up until now, women in hip hop have always um, been thought of as the chicks that got put on. <laughs> Their popularity and inclusion in hip hop has always um, been, even from the beginning till now, connected to the opposite sex. When you look at Ms. Melody, she got put on, quote unquote, by Kara's One. Ms. Lauren Hill, Wyclef, Salt and Pepper connected to Herbie Love Club, Little, um, Little Kim connected to Biggie, and Nicki Minaj to Little Wayne. It goes on and on, which in a way I feel like is um, a way to deny our power, our skills, and um, our own involvement within hip hop. Um, I've been raised in I was raised in the Bronx, so like most of you have been raised in, in the urban city, we know women who have participated in hip hop. We know women who write their own rhymes and we're also participating in the forum. So I want to start off by going back to the history of hip hop, especially looking at video music box, which I feel played an integral role in putting women on the spot. What is the first remembrance you have of hip hop? Um, specifically if you can of women in hip hop. Um, video wise, I'll even make it more specific. What's the first video remember? And how did it impact you as a young woman? I'm going to start off right here. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, the video that stands out in my mind, to be honest, is Soul and Pepper Pushing. <laughs> and, you know, I saw, I saw a little video music, but I was like, yeah, that's, you know, I like the way they dress and the way they look and their hair. And I was like, singing the song. I think I was like 10 at the time. And I remember my mom came out in the living room. She was like, push what? I was like, mom, it's a song. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just that, you know, I felt like uh, Salt and Pepper, they were womanly, they were sexy, they were intelligent, you know? So yeah, it's just like, I really looked up to them. You know, they talked about issues that were important at the time. So it wasn't just all about sex, but it was about being a woman, about being responsible, about being responsible for your life and yourself. So. Yeah, so the question. Mm -hmm. uh, the first video I remember on video on my video music box was um Roxanne Shante. Yeah. <laughs> Revenge song. And um that watching that video, I was like, I was a young girl and I was watching that video like, see, girls can rap. Girls can do it. You know, she was just it, it, the power she had holding that microphone and letting them know who she was, and you know, she wasn't going to stand for them talking about her. Like, that was powerful to me. That was the first video that I remember seeing. And Salt and as well definitely was, um, for me, like, cool. Because being a dancer, starting off as a dancer, being a dancer, and seeing them in the unitards, I was like, oh, we can wear those. I was like, we can wear those on the street. It was <laughs> You know, I thought they brought fashion to the you know, whole hip hop thing and the style, the earrings, the hair, and everything. You know, that was definitely an inspiration as well. Um, I wouldn't say I had one. I think it was just the entire time when it started happening. 
because I remember Roxanne, I remember MC Light, I remember <laughs> Salt and Pepper. So it was just as a woman finally seeing us there, and you had a, a, a broad array, uh, array of women that had skills and talent, and the Salt and Pepper video was just colorful. You didn't see the cipher anymore. Right? Right. So it was just the time, per se. I don't have a particular one. I was just happy about everything. Well, I would agree with Charlene and what she just said, but my first remembrance of seeing a female in the video had to be, um, I say, the Boogie Boys. I don't know if you remember Inspector Gadget. And I think. It would have to be Inspector Gadget, and I think the young lady's name is Kay Love, and her part was not that long. But when she popped out, I lost my mind. <laughs> so, you know, I loved every minute of it. Um, I would say the next person would have to be MC Light. Because MC Light was strong. She was just like, I'm not having it. You know, I'm trying to whisper in my ear, but I'm not having it. You know? <laughs> so, I would have to go. So definitely, Light was a major influence. And me just loved hip hop. Yeah, I can't say Light enough. Like, I think she's the only, well, between her and Lassie Clark, I think I've memorized like every album each of them had, from like front to back, I probably got it backwards. Um, aside from that, I think the first video, first female rapper in a video, on video music box for me, that I saw, aside from like, so I'm never pushing. Um, Cause we used to choreograph dances to that. <laughs> like, I know I remember vividly like, moving everything off on the bed, taking the mattress off, my sister and I like, Right. Really that's, that's, I think push up <laughs> tells me that the push it is one of those songs that I think is real seminal in terms of like giving us a real voice into who we were sexually, even though we would look young and you said we didn't know what we were doing. As we got older and I looked back at that video, I was like, Oh, they were really they were being sophisticated, but they were also showing that yeah, they could be sexual women as well and be smart, and be sexy, and seeing that. It's different from just hearing, because we heard the song, we had our tapes, you know, popping the cassette. So what did seeing the actual images do for you? Like, how did it resonate for you? Was it was it something that inspired you? Was it empowering, or was it something, was it just something new to you, or something that you saw? I think it was something fresh. Okay. You know? it, was, it was like, wow, we're doing that on the street. We know people, at least growing up in New York, and seeing people like that every day, but then actually seeing it on screen made at least it made me feel relevant for a second. It was like, wait, I can, I can be right there? Right. And, and she can dress like me? You know, she can slash her I still slash my brush. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, it was, it was dope in that way. But I think the artist who really resonated with me the most was probably Mooney Love, though. Mm. Because of the fact that I know no one likes to talk about Mooney, but like for me, it was about Mooney because it was the whole international connection. You know? yeah. I'm a first generation American, so for her to be here in yeah. Rhyme made me feel like, oh, I can get into this too. Right. Even though I'm not quote unquote African American, like that box that people want to put hip hop in on the time. Right. So I'm going to flip it a little bit. I was going to go in a little historical order, but I'm going to actually just flip it to present time. How do we go from seeing MC like, um, <laughs> Salt Pepper Push It, Ladies First with Queen Latifah to a Nicki Minaj, Stephen Ho. Um, how do you think what what happened in the, within the culture? Do you do you think, and I'll be specific, do you think maybe a salt pepper push it video, do you think our sexuality was more our downfall than our benefit? No. No. Um, my opinion just started in that not even naming a name or giving a specific video. It's just a change of times. Our music is more global now, and a Nicki Minaj is just encompassing what we have right now. It's fashion forward. She's very marketable. It's, it's just what it is right now. So the problem was that time, and it was a step up from just traditional rap to more mainstream because that video broke them. They went further. They, that was probably one of a more mainstream video at that particular time. Right. And Nicki Minaj is the equivalent of that right now. But then you have, but on the flip side, if you look at men in the game and hip hop, their, their rhymes in the game for them is just as diverse as ever. It seems like for women in hip hop, it's become this monolithic form. If you don't look like or act like 
a Nicki Minaj and you don't get put in the game. There's not, you don't have the variety that we had, let's say, just 10 years ago when you had a Lauryn Hill. Um, I don't feel we have that even on the male side. Oh, I mean, really? our music is more, it, you know, if we want to get regional, it's more Southern right now. And New York or even West Coast artists are transforming their music to sound more Southern. So I think just overall that music is just in a particular era. Like it's on just, the mainstream level. Though. Yeah. On the mainstream level. Yeah. Because those artists are there. You know, there are female artists who don't look like Nicki Minaj. Yeah. Still if we talk about making money. Yeah. Right. The same exactly. Thing right. Yeah, and the Lauren Hills yeah. and the yeah. Moni Loves and the, you know, it's just getting broader. We have people are performing in Japan now, you know, so it's, it's just on a different spectrum. So I wouldn't say that we've lost anything, we're just kind of moving on and it's, it's next chapter. And once this is finished, you know, maybe there's going to be the artist that brings back New York or L.A. and then it's going to move again. And then, you know, it's just, it's all about everything coming together. We're like, it's globalization at its finest. I mean. Really? Okay. So, is everybody in agreement? Or does, I mean, I personally feel like women in hip hop is in, Christ, in a crisis right now. Yeah, it's like, I, I really miss the, uh, the diversity. Uh, where we used to have uh, a Lauryn Hill, or we used to have, um, you know, like um, MCs like MC Light and, and people of that nature, Queen Latifah. You know, so for me, it's, you know, it really does kind of hurt that there's only one type of female that's out right now. You know, and a lot of times, um, the A&Rs would say, well, yeah, we can't put out so many female MCs because, well, you know, they need, like, what, a uh, stack of people behind them to do their hair, to carry their clothes, to do all this stuff, you know, the stylists and this and the third. But um, I just feel like when women, like, a Lauryn Hill comes out, you know, um, one young lady that I really love is Dynasty. I don't know if any of you heard the dynasty, but she kind of reminds me of a, of a young Laura Hill right now. But when artists like that come out, it's like, you know, we have to get our young people, you know, like involved, like, you know, to, so they can really, like, open their minds up to, you know, different types of music and also positivity. So I think we just have to support those artists. So you feel like there's a double standard with women in hip hop than there is with men. Like they're, they're expected to do more. Can you speak? Why don't you speak more about that? The challenges of women in hip yeah, hop. Definitely. Game. I mean, business. I think it's expected for women to be more sexual and more sexy, and you know, um, for the most part, like. When you see our male counterparts in this in this industry, you know they can put on a T-shirt and a pair of jeans and get on stage, and everybody's going, you know, waving their hands. But you come on stage as a female with a T-shirt and jeans, nobody wants to see that. You know, I think they really are selling sex um, more now. And, and like she said, there's no diversity. You know, you can be sexy, of course, you can be sexy. As women, we are sexy. You know, that's just what we are. But for the most part, I think you just have to know how to balance that, you know, and right now there's no balance. It's just like she said, it's, it's one dimension at this point. Amy? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, like, I mean, I agree with it um, being the fault of uh, the business of music in general, saying that sex sells and this is why our women look like this. But we're also choosing this too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I remember when Nicki Minaj didn't look like that. Mm -hmm. And she changed herself yeah. to be that. Did she, she change herself or was she changed by... She changed herself. Uh, I know that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but it also hurts me to hear that... I, like, I keep hearing that there's no diversity thing. And, I disagree. I go to concerts all the time. There's Invincible, there's Jean Grey, there's so many female artists out there, but what's happening is we're not supporting them. We're waiting for the Nicki Minaj's to come out and drop an album so that we can like support them as opposed to, because they look familiar, as opposed to the ones who are actually talking about something. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing about Jean Grey and Invincible, right, they're all independent artists, I guess. It's like, I had a long Jean conversation with them. Jean Grey. No, I'm saying she is yeah. independent. Like, I mean, not Jean Grey. Um, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, Minaj right. But Jean Grey, we, my friend and I had this great conversation. Like, we don't feel like that type of artist will ever cross over to the mainstream. Not necessarily because we don't, they don't get their support. Because I go to her shows, and I feel like she does get a lot of support. I just think it goes back to what is expected of us. In the U.S. Yes, most definitely. Anyways, because like that's another thing that 
is very interesting to me is that the artists who are culture who holds true to the culture of hip hop mm -hmm. do better overseas than they do here, mm -hmm. right? whether they're male or female. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's sad that Jean Grey can't book, you know, Madison Square Garden, but she can go out to France real quick mm -hmm. and book every nightclub, right. like for three weeks straight. So then that comes back to the business of hip hop, right. which is very interesting to me because it's not like women are not holding any rank within on the business side. I mean, we've had from Sylvia Robinson in the beginning with Shady Hill Records to Carmen Asher's Watson at Def Jam. Um, and we, we still have many women now that are holding it down. Sylvia Rohn, um, Janet Fleischman, there are a lot of people in the business. So what's on the, talk, I'd love for people that are on the business side to talk about some of the challenges you face. Like when you're in the boardroom, you have to make decisions about what an album cover is going to look like, what a video is going to look like, who's going, what are the girls in the video going to wear, how are they going to come off. How do those decisions break down? Um, well, I, to be honest, I started, when I started at Loud, I was the only girl employee. <laughs> in the whole company, in the whole company. Wow. It was five of us, all men, and all my groups were men. Wow. I had Wu-Tang Clan, Mob D, um, Cellar Dwellers, Alcoholics. <laughs> I had all men. So even for me going to work, I, I wore sweatpants and sneakers because I didn't feel like looking like a girl because I was on the road with nothing but men. So you feel like would be taken less seriously if you were. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I feel that that even kind of transcends now. They always look at the girl that's around as whose girlfriend is that or the movie or they never really look at the fact that I might be the one that calling the shots. In 2012. In 2012. Right. So it still happens now and I don't think that that changes in any company that you work in. So I don't even think that's just music.